Hey guys, Jeremy here from the Hockey Movement. In this video, I'm giving you a review of the sports screen and also showing you guys how you can install it at home. It was delivered to me about a week or two ago. It's been snowing and hailing and freezing rain since then. It's been outside, so I'm gonna drag it in here and then give you guys a look. This is it, this is a sports screen. It's a screen that you can hang in your garage door or uh, over a wall and it's gonna protect whatever it is that you're trying to protect from getting hit by hockey pucks. Uh, you can put in a single car garage or a double car. This is a 16 foot version that comes in automatic. So you push a button and it rolls up and rolls down. I just got the manual one because I'm hanging it on a wall permanently. I'm not gonna have to put it up and down, up and down. So, you know, why get the extra if you don't need it? Let's take a look at some of these features. Quick and easy installation, we'll see about that. For the mounting options, you can put it inside a door jam on brick, siding, ceiling joist, wall studs, or fence post. We're gonna put it on the ceiling joist here in the garage. Let's go. So let's take a look what we got. We got the screen right here. Uh, this looks like the housing for the uh, crank unit. These look like the brackets to mount it. And then of course we have the instructions. Like any man, I'm gonna skim all the words. I'm gonna look at the pictures, pretend I know what I'm doing and hope for the best. So we'll see how that turns out. You probably noticed that there's a shooting tarp behind me already. So why am I installing a second one? Well, the sports screen is gonna be going on this wall. You can see it's taking its fair share of abuse. This one right here, you can even see where the puck was made. That's pretty cool. I'm particularly worried about that window and that's why I figured I should probably put a screen right there. Step one is to lay everything out. You have to join this tube, this tube together with this one. This one's got this little valley right there and you just line it up with, I guess the indent on this one. So you put this in here about nine inches, leave about nine inches exposed, then Insert into this one. There you go. By the way, this really sucks when it's negative 15 out. Instructions say to make sure this is evenly put into each tube. Uh, it says it's marked at center, but I don't see a center marking, so I'm just gonna put one there myself. That'll get me close enough. Uh, Phillips head screw, that one I'll do. I'm gonna screw these self-tapping screws into the pre-marked holes. All the screws are in top and bottom on this side and the other side, now the bracket. The bracket has different holes, so you can change the alignment of this bracket. This thing right here is gonna drop into there. I'm just mounting mine from the ceiling, so it's gonna drop in from the top, so I'm just gonna put it right there. Now I'm gonna mount the uh, crank to this bracket with these three screws. We've got the two by fours installed so we can mount the brackets to them. Uh, now we gotta install this 16 foot long bar. This is the part of the installation which you probably get help from a friend, or if you're like me, uh, just try to do it yourself and hope you don't get hurt. Wish me luck. I just put one screw in as a placeholder just to hold this up while I install the other side. Oh, well, that's gonna be a problem. It doesn't quite hit the two by four. Give me a second. I've got four screws in there, but I just have it loose right now. I'll tighten it up after. Over to the other side. I got four screws in there. Wasn't pretty, but it's holding it up. Let's go over to the other side, tighten that up. And then I think we put the screen up. This step is really important for safety. On the side where there isn't a crank, you can see this little piece slides into this little slot. Well, if you're cranking it, that can lift up and eventually this whole thing could fall. So there's a little hole right there you gotta make sure you put this cotter pin through that hole. All right, almost done. Next step is to install the screen. Pretty simple, there's Velcro right here. It attaches a Velcro that's straight across that bar. It says to use two people, this screen is 16 feet long and if you don't get it perfectly even across, it won't roll up properly. But of course, I'm gonna try to do it myself. <sighs> Pressure's on, let's go. I was trying to keep it tightly wrapped up so I could Velcro it and then it would all come undone, make it easier for one person to put up. Then I found this thin strip of Velcro at the bottom, which is supposed to go right there. So I gotta pull this whole thing down, do it again. It looks like installing this in really cold weather isn't recommended. The Velcro just came off, so it's not completely off, but it's coming off in this area. Uh, it's sticky on the bottom, it's supposed to stick right there. I bet, because the steel is so cold, it's just the tackiness isn't there. So I'm gonna just put that back on and we're gonna do take two. Well, I think I got it, but we still got some steps left. One recommendation is when I was installing it, I had the Velcro right on the very bottom of that bar. So when I was attaching the mesh, 
the mesh was pulling directly down on that Velcro, which is probably causing it a little more pressure to pull off of the uh, top bar. So just roll that bar up a little bit so the Velcro is more at the top, and that's gonna probably prevent the Velcro from coming off the bar like it did with me. Let's go to step number whatever. We still got some parts left, so these three plastic bars attached with these two plastic connectors, that goes in the middle, and then the heavy metal bottom bar attaches these two metal connectors, and that goes on the bottom. Let's put them together. Use the pre-marked locations, the remaining self-tapping screws, and attach these bars together for these new Now comes the time where we have to slide a 16 foot long pole through a 16 foot long pocket. Now, if you're the type of person who has a wall there, and a wall there, you don't have much room to work with. Luckily, this is plastic and it has some flexibility to it, especially at the joints, so I might be able to work it through that Velcro pocket. Let's find out. There are two pockets and the screen must go in the larger pocket. I think that means the bar must go in the larger pocket. Do not put the bar in the small Velcro pocket. This side has Velcro on it and this side has Velcro on it and they both appear about the same size to me. I think that this one appears just slightly larger, so I'm going to put it in there and hopefully that's right. I'm going to crank this thing up a bit and then put the metal bar in the bottom. It's working! It's cranking! I did not mess it up. According to the instructions, I'm supposed to connect these three metal bars with these two metal joiners. That would give me a 16 foot long solid metal pipe, but I don't have 16 feet of extra space to slide it into this bottom slot. So what I'm gonna do is just forget about these joiners and put the bars in loose, and I don't think I'll have any serious consequences. I can do that now because the window's covered. Okay, one slight issue, there's about 16 feet of bar, but 15 and a half feet between one dasher board and the next, so I'm gonna have to pull that out, get the hacksaw, shave a little off there. Put a little hockey tape over there for safety. Success. Well, there you have it, the sports screen is fully installed. There's different targets that you can put up right here. There's a Velcro strip that goes along right in the middle, and all you do is grab your target, whichever one you want. You can do lacrosse, soccer, any sport, put it up there, and you're good to go. There are holes right here, so if a puck goes and hits it, it's gonna go down and it comes right out at the bottom. So now I'm going to tidy up the garage and test this thing out, but I'm gonna save that for another video. My overall thoughts on the installation of the sports screen. Once I understood all the parts and the pieces and all that stuff, it wasn't too hard. But initially, just going into it, the instructions have everything you need. There's all kinds of pictures and diagrams and labels, and then there's just a big old page of text after text after text. There was a lot of flipping back and forth, back and forth, from one page to the next, look at the picture, look at the text, look at the diagram, look at the picture, to make sure that I was getting all the right pieces and using them at the right time. So it wasn't really easy to follow step one, step two, step three. And I mean, I put together IKEA furniture before, so I consider myself quite the handyman. Overall though, you know, after a few hours, I'd say you could get this together. With this video, I bet you could shrink that down to close to the hour that they give you. Unless of course, you plan to shoot a how-to video on how to put this thing together and then throw it up on YouTube. You may have noticed I've grown a little facial hair since we started this video. Well, that's because I put in an hour here, an hour there, an hour here over the course of a week. Uh, but for you guys, I'd say slot off an afternoon and you should be good to go. Bring a friend that'll probably make it a little bit easier and watch this video, gonna make it a lot easier. If you wanna pick it up, I'll put the price down here in the video description and a link to where you can pick it up. Thanks a lot for watching the video. If you wanna see the full review, me testing this thing out, then hit that subscribe button. I make new hockey videos every single week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.